suffer from mental health or have social anxiety can worship help. Today in our next Fire Catchers Chat, that is exactly what we're talking about. Stay tuned. Welcome back. I'm Andrea York with Catch the Fire Worship Flags. And today we are talking with Melinda Lona Campbell. And she has bravely said that she's going to join us. And I'm going to tell you why that's brave. She has bravely said yes when I invited her to be part of our broadcast today. And we're going to get into why that's a brave and courageous thing. And it will definitely encourage your heart. So welcome, Melinda. Thank you for having me. So Melinda, we were just talking before and you were just telling me that you have lived in many different places. Currently, you're living in Tennessee. And here's the thing that I like to ask when people have lived in different places. What's your favorite local cuisine that you love to indulge where you live now in Tennessee? You might be underwhelmed by this. My husband and I very much enjoy frequenting our local Texas Roadhouse. So I wish I had a better answer for you, but now the locals will tell you that Ralph's Donuts is absolutely delicious. And I like donuts. They're not my favorite. So we've been there. They're quite good. So if you're a donut person, that's definitely a stop. And everybody who knows anything will tell you to go there. You know, isn't that funny? I think every city has like a good donut place. But as a Canadian who doesn't get Texas barbecue, Texas barbecue would probably what be one of my favorite things that, especially in the States and in the South, anywhere down there. seems Absolutely. Like I do love a really good brisket. It is my favorite barbecue. Okay. Actually, in my opinion, it is the only barbecue. <laughs> I, I think I'd agree with you. I definitely yeah. would agree with you. And you, you're creative. What, how does that look like? What kind of output does that... Well, kind of. It comes and goes on, I guess, whims of fancy, I suppose. I've done things like wire wrap jewelry, chain mail. I'm currently learning an instrument. I've done silk tie-dyeing, shirt tie-dyeing, and different things like that. Done painting, done. I'll do about anything if, if I get if I get a little itch. My struggle is usually to finish and not have like five or six things in process at the same time. So I'm working on that. I do you read books? I used to read a book really fast all the way through. Now I currently have three I'm in the middle of. So yeah, I guess I'm doing that. Most creative people are. And are those guitars in, behind you, are they yours or your husband's? They're, they're mine via my husband because I'm spoiled and unemployed. No, uh, so I'm, I'm learning to play bass guitar. So he's, he's given me a lot of them. Unfortunately, you don't get more skill when you get more instruments. So yeah. That makes me laugh because it's kind of like, you don't actually need probably all of the tools that we do have, but exactly. it makes us feel like we're probably better than we are. So in, in music, it's called GAS, also known as gear acquisition syndrome. <laughs> you know, it's a thing. And I that might that might transfer to flags as well. You know? Right. <laughs> I, I don't, right. I don't, when it comes to anything, the things that are my creative output, there's no limit to what. Exactly. I mean, I started with flags because I wanted to make them for myself and then look what it did. Right. I mean, I mean, do you want more flags or fewer flags? I don't know. I feel like there's only one answer. So we just started talking about flags. Tell me about how you started worship, using worship flags. Did you grow up with it? Is this a new thing? How new? So I was raised in a very legalistic church. There wasn't really any room for like the work of the Holy Spirit. Everything had to be done the same way all the time. When my parents got divorced, ultimately, we started going to an Assembly of God church when I was, oh, I want to say 10, 11, 12 or so. I kind of just did my own thing. You know, there was like things going on at home. I made a decision for the Lord back then, but you know, there wasn't any real witness in my life. I grew up and moved to Cleveland with an abusive guy and I did that for a few years. And then I ended up leaving him at the time I left him. I had like the clothes on my back and that's it. So I went back to near my old town and moved in with my brother to get away from the situation. And I started going back to that Assembly of God church. And I sat there for a good month or so, just like, you know, condemnation, like kind of whipping my butt, like, you know, saying things like, God, you know, I would dedicate my life to you. I just don't really believe that you want me, you know? And one day I was sitting there and I was saying that, 
you know, internally. And this lady came and put her hand on my shoulder. And she's like, I feel like the Holy Spirit told me to come over to you. And so I told her what I'd think. And this lady like drug me up to my pastor, Mark. And, you know, he led me through the center prayer. Again, I rededicated my life to the Lord. Now at that time, they used flags in that Assemblies of God church. I had never really seen that before, but they had a bunch of flags and they just let them, they were there for everybody to use. And so I started worshiping with the flags and like I dealt with a lot of insecurity. Like I've always been a a tall, larger person and I've always felt, you know, like I stick out like a sore thumb. And I've, you know, I've struggled with bullying in school and I've always like felt like I needed to be invisible and not noticed because if you're noticed, it's like never good, right? But like God, you know, started giving me the love for flagging and in the flagging, you know, he started to speak to my spirit about how, you know, what if they were thinking negative about you? I mean, this is a, this is my house, you know, and you have a right to worship here. And not only that, like God is worthy to receive our worship and freely. And whether we flag or whether you lay prostrate on the floor, or whether you kneel or whether you lift your hands or whether you stand there and pray silently, you know, it's between you and the Lord and not what everybody else is doing. So he, he really helped to use that to help me to focus on him and to worship him and not worry about what other people are thinking about it. You know, like worship him anyway, like he is worthy to receive our, our full worship. Like I said, whether that's flags, whether that's in some other ministry or service, you know, whether you're singing on the platform or whether you're in production or whether you're holding the door open for somebody, you know, that is our worship when we're submitting it to God. It's amazing how really everybody who picks up flags or does something that is, let me just say out of the ordinary, but yes, yes, weird for the weird Christians. Yeah. They're the weird (laughs) ones. No matter what happens, like no matter if it's something out of the, the ordinary, I think it's, I can't think of any worshiper that I have talked with that has not gone through that internal dialogue of, I don't want people looking at me because I've said this in lots of different videos or training, a big, a flag is a big, is yeah. a big, look at me. Yeah, like exactly. This, it's like, you couldn't have a bigger marquee or like lights mm-hmm. around you. And how God just quiets our heart, right? It has to come down to every time it has to come down to you and him before the throne, your heart before his heart, your heart before before his feet. And then it's everything else starts to fade away. Now, this is an interesting concept. We're going to be talking about some mental health issues and really where it can cause anxiety. And so I want to I want to talk to you in a social media post on our on Facebook. We had had a post and you had made a comment that how God had taken you into some healing for mental health. And I and that was how I reached out to you. I know that we've been associated. I know your name. You've purchased from us before, but I was really intrigued because the power of worship and what it does. So tell me about what the difference that worship flags has made. Tell us what you had been struggling with and some of the the healing process that worship brought you through. Absolutely. So like I said before, I've often felt like I had to like really fight through insecurity, anxiety, fear of everybody else's opinion in order to step out in any way but especially at the beginning in my flag journey worshiping with flags it was just like a fight i believe that the lord used it to teach teach me we can step out and we can give him that worship even when we're struggling i use the flags as a focus for prayer because i struggle with adhd and inattentiveness and enough of a thing to that i'm not like feeling like i'm looking everywhere else but where i'm supposed to be right to focus your hands and your eyes on the Lord. I struggled with bipolar symptoms. Actually, it seemed to me that when I gave my life to the Lord, or dedicated to the Lord in 2004, I was baptized not long after that. And it seemed to me that, and it was confusing for me because like part of it was a reborn experience, but I didn't realize that, I guess, excitement or anxiety built up so much that, you know, I had my first bipolar episode. I didn't even recognize that's what it was until years later when I had the second one. And I has used those instances to teach me, you know, the power of our words because a symptom of bipolar is is pressured speech. 
you know, when you so much going on in your brain, you can't help but like the, the blurting it all out and it doesn't really make sense to anybody who's hearing. And, you know, God helped me to see through that, the power of our words and that, you know, even if I was feeling those symptoms that I don't have to like speak it. Right. And, you know, for a long time, I actually, I struggled with my relationship with the Lord because of that, the, the episodes, because, you know, I felt, I repented to the Lord for this attitude, but for a long time, I felt like, well, God, you know, I was I'm trying to get closer to you. And I really felt like, you know, God had like kind of picked me up and held me in his arms and then like dropped me on my face. You know, it's what it felt like. And like for years, I well, God, I know you're real and I know you're my only hope. Like, like Job says, though, though you slay me, I'll hope in you. But for years, that was all I had. And, you know, like, I felt like my brain was so messed up that, like, the best I can do is shut my mouth. That's how I felt. When I commented on your Facebook post, God had been touching my heart about, like, let me back up. In 2020, God gave me a dream. And I don't, It's it was a big, crazy dream. But the gist of it was, like, I knew that God was getting ready to bring me through a healing. It was, and like, from what the dream was, it was going to be, like, a deep healing. Like, but I waited. I was, like, really happy about that in 2020. And I was really expectant. And then by the time, like, 2023 rolled around, I was just, like, you know, I knew it was a dream from God, but I really felt like it wasn't going nowhere. And I was just getting my attitude. I guess my real attitude was coming out. And I was getting angry. I was getting like, I guess I wasn't mean to people, but in inside I knew I was angry and I was mean and I was getting bitter. But like God led me to start looking for a therapist and it took me about a year to actually do it. And, you know, part of me was like, well, you know, sometimes the Christian church kind of vilifies psychotherapy and counseling. And, and that was a struggle. But at the time I was like, you know what, I, I guess I'll try it. I mean, nothing else was working. I mean, right? So I did. And I really felt when I got there, my first session, really, it like, it was like a on and off switch. Like my first session, I had so much anxiety stirred up that it put me into a bipolar episode. And that whole entire week, like not working right now, I didn't have to go to work and deal with people. But it was like that whole week, God was showing me, yeah, you, if you struggle with what you say, it doesn't have to come out of your mouth. And so like, I worshiped all week. And I post on that I'd post, like, I had gone, I was going through like, like literally like, you know, truth and lies, like stark contrast. And I had made a worship playlist and I was doing that, but I was also like, I guess trying to get in touch with my feelings. So I made a playlist of music I used to listen to. I used to like cut myself when I was young to deal with like the stress and anxiety of abuse and whatnot. And, you know, like I would go listen to the worship and then I listened to that other stuff. I'm like, and it was just such a stark contrast, but like that up and down, like bipolar thing, like, had me by the end of the week to my next episode in such a dark place mentally. I was like, I felt like I was literally on the verge of losing my mind. And, you know, I went to that appointment and I was not in my right mind. And like, you know, I, I, I sat with my therapist and we talked about it and whatnot. And just like, I just had the impression, like, you know, God was just telling me because I didn't want to keep doing it. But I sat in that chair and God told me, like, you're going to sit in this chair until I tell you, to, tell you to leave. So that's where I'm at. I'm in obedience and we're going to see what God's going to do. But, you know, he's showing me a lot of deceptions that, you know, the mental illness had brought in. And even now that I'm going through another struggle with anxiety, with like ministry opportunities I've been given. So, and, and God is teaching me, you know, it's, it's definitely a struggle and a battle. But you know what? I do believe that there is freedom from mental illness. And, you know, if someone continues to struggle all their life, I do know that God has them because, you know, God made you, God loves you. He knows the ins and outs of your brain and he is in charge of it. And, and there's, there's, I just want to, if you are struggling right now uh, with mental illness and you are feeling, if there's any condemnation that the enemy is giving you that Christians don't struggle, that if God has given you a promise that it is you're the failure for not walking it out, I want to tell you that there is help and to get help that there is, that God has given us fantastic counselors and therapists to right. help walk through what you're going through. It is a physiological issue as well. It might be spiritual, but do not struggle alone and thinking that you just have to have more faith or more worship. Instead, instead, God uses all of these deep things to make you free, to get you free. That is his desire for you. So if you're struggling with that right now, please reach out. We can provide some resources. And I personally will look for help in your area with 
to get you the help that you need. And, and Melinda, so- you are saying that, like, I love what you're just sharing. It's not, there's a resilient, first off, there's a resilience. You want to get well. And I think that this judgment that the person that struggles with mental illness, just suck it up, buttercup. That right, yeah, yeah right? It yeah. is, this is deep work. So what the Lord promised you in 2020 and in 2023, here you are struggling probably deeper than ever before mm-hmm. in an episode. I it reminded me, I just want to read as you're talking, it reminded me of Habakkuk 2.3. It says, this is the vision for the future time. It describes the end and it will be fulfilled. If it seems slow and coming, wait patiently for it, it will surely take place. It will wow. not delayed. And so that's just a promise. And so in this process of going through it, you how often did you pick up worship flags or what were you doing with the worship as you were struggling? It was a way for you, you mentioned it was a way for you to kind of focus your mind. Mm-hmm. It's kind of sometimes hard to explain this things that are spiritually that was happening, but as best you can, are you able to explain what was happening for you spiritually when you were using worship flags? So when I, you know, I put on my worship playlist and sometimes I'll pace and pray. And what I'll do is I'll pace and pray and then I'll stop and I'll grab the flags. And I miss like, I guess maybe it's like the intercession and then the, I feel like my spirit's like, I guess, confessing what God is telling me. Right. So like, intercession and praise and there's just a peace that comes over and i don't usually flag and flag i'm like a, a stop and start kind of girl you know and just yeah it is it is hard to explain but it, it is a real thing and you know i kind of just go with the spirit i'm either pacing and praying or or flagging Do you, and now are you doing this it sounds like you're doing this at like in the privacy of your own home are you doing this at church so my church in Fort Worth, I did it very often at the moment. So like there is a balance with all things in the way we relate to God, you know, and for me, what started as pressing through anxiety and that victory that comes from that, I do tend to st- swing from one extreme to the other to feel like, well, I have to flag in it. Right. So sometimes it's like, well, I get to flag, but then eventually it goes to, I have to flag. That makes sense. And, and you know, God desires a balance in all things. Right now, I do flag at church. I try to be a lot more sensitive to, you know, does God want me to flag today? Right. And sometimes I need to sit down. I flagged on Palm Sunday. Yeah, I, I felt led to. And, you know, I, I felt a piece in that. I've started doing media, so I can't flag every Sunday. But I'm willing and I have and I will. But I do think for me, I maybe shouldn't flag all the time. I really need to ask Holy Spirit like every time, do you want me to worship you this way today? Right. You know, but I I do flag in my own home. You know, that's another thing. We only want to flag where other people can see us. You know, it's kind of like, well, I only want to pray when other people can see me, you know, so that's a hard thing. And, you know, like I said, God, God wants all things in balance to him and for him because anything, I mean, anything can become an idol. If, you know, your heart is not right, or if you're, you, you just, well, you know, flags are the thing and the only thing. And God has really been working on me a lot with that. I don't want to make an idol out of anything. I, I want God, you know, and if I get to flag him to show him, that's great. If I get to run slides on Sunday to show him, that's, that's you know, but flags will always have a super special place in my heart because it was the beginning of, of, you know, God showing me that freedom is possible and that a renewed mind is possible. In one of your moments when you have been a time of worship what and a time of, of God, even in the midst of perhaps some of your dark places you've been, could you share something like a, a something that the Lord has spoken directly to your spirit that you had received? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. You understand the question? I, I understand. No, and I wrote this down today because... I, I'm working on Bible memorization, but, and this happened to me a couple of times, like the last bipolar episode I had before this one was in 2010. And I remember the Holy Spirit speaking these two verses to me at that time. And he spoke them again to me this time. And I, I'll precursor that, like, you may or may not understand this, but somebody is going to. When you imagine the voice of the Holy Spirit, a struggle I have had is, you know, sometimes it, you, you might be hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit as the voice of your father. And if your father was not a nice person, you might feel like, 
the Holy Spirit is yelling at you or, you know, scolding you, right? And, and that's something that God showed me, you know, like his, if our fathers were harsh or abusive or whatever, I mean, that's, that's not Holy Spirit's voice. So in this, I'm going to find it. I'm going to find it. I got them written down here. So imagine that if you didn't have a father that was a good father, imagine how you would want that father to speak to you, even if it was like a correction or a harsh word, right? You'd want him to speak to you tenderly, understandingly, lovingly, as in I'm telling you this because I love you, right? So God had showed me these two verses, and I believe they're very much relatable. It's, it's where God says related, but I believe that they tie together because he showed me these two verses. Now, the first one is Isaiah 118. It says, come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be like wool. And that tied together with Revelation 318. And this is the verse that I always heard as a God yelling at me and waiting to like pound me, right? But the way the Holy Spirit said it to me, it was like the most loving and the most understanding and like the most, I guess, heart softening voice that I'd ever heard. And I felt loved, I felt seen and I felt understood and I felt hope. And it says, I advise you to buy from me gold refined in the fire so that you may be rich, white clothes so that you may be dressed and your shameful nakedness not be exposed and ointment to spread on your eyes so that you may see. Now, you know that that comes from Revelation 3, talking about the church in Laodicea and how they are lukewarm. And a lot of sermons that you hear that talk about that, it's, you know, like, you lukewarm church, ah, right? I, I feel like everybody that spent any amount of time in church has heard that and has heard it, that in that tone. But that's not how the Holy Spirit said it to me. The Holy Spirit said it to me like, I love you. I understand. Come home. I have what you need. That's what the Holy Spirit says. Come home to me. And, you know, he's, he's not like sugarcoat anything for you. You know, he's going to say, this is your condition and you need me and I want to help you. And that's that is what every single time I've heard him speak, he is me like that. And you know what? I want to hear him talk to me all the time. I would feel a lot less anxious if I heard that all the time. I, that is so beautiful. It brings a tear to my eye, makes me feel choked up. And I love how what you said, it's he does shy away from the reality. That's right. There's a problem, but. I'm going to help you. I want to help you. And that's the thing that we, you are struggling with mental health. It doesn't take a therapist to know that that's not right. That's right. right? That's not the way that God wants you to ha live. And what Holy Spirit is saying, there's a problem here and I'm going to help you. I'm going to yes. lift you up. I'm going to take you out and I'm going to give you peace where there's anxiety. I'm going to give you hope where there's despair. I'm going to give you life where you're choosing death. Like those are the beautiful things that the Holy Spirit does in how he doesn't shy away from the reality of what's happening, right. doesn't sugarcoat it, doesn't gloss over it, doesn't even excuse it. You know, he's so beautiful and he is so worthy of worship. He's so worthy of all our worship. And then in the worship, we get to know him greater yes. and greater and greater. That is so beautiful. And I think that that is a fantastic place to end. Thank you for sharing that. Would you pray for anybody who would be watching this? Would you pray for the place where they're at and, and pray hope for them? Uh, yes, I absolutely would. Okay. <laughs> oh, Father God, I thank you for the opportunity to come to you today. And Lord, I just want to lift up anybody to you that has been struggling with any kind of mental illness. A lot of times it can make us feel like we're too messed up for you. It can make us feel like there's no hope. It can make us feel like there's no healing or no cure for us. But Lord, often it makes us feel like we're the only ones that we're isolated and nobody can understand. Well, that that is a lie and we're going to confess that's a lie, Lord. Father God, I ask that you would give anybody struggling with this hope that they're not alone and that you would send to them a understanding community of believers, Lord, that you would help them to find ministries, healing ministries, therapies, and even medication, Lord, if you lead them to that, that they will find the support that they need, Lord, that they will cling to you even in their 
confusion, and we're going to call it temporary confusion because your word says that you're not the author of confusion, God. We thank, that, thank you that you've given us your word, Lord. I ask that you would stir up in them a heart for your word, Lord, because it's in your word, God, that you give us the keys for freedom, God. God, and we just thank you for everything you've done in us, Lord. We thank you that you came for everybody, even those who struggle with their minds, Lord. We thank you so much for what you're going to do. We thank you so much for freedom and healing. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. That is just a blessing for our fire catchers who are going to be listening to this. I have one other final question, and this is one I like to ask all the fire catchers who come on. Um, what is your favorite Catch the Fire Worship flags flag? My favorite flags are the Shekinah Glory flags. They're, it, it reminds me of the song that our worship pastor in Ohio had written and it goes seraphim and cherubim wings of angels surround him glory is the lord the worthy is the lord of hosts and it reminds me it just takes me there it takes me there in my mind and i love to imagine you know how the the angels are actually in the angels are inhabiting our praise they're you know i don't know I, i'm sorry ramble i do love them they're they're and they're weighty and i think it's fitting that yeah, yeah. Yeah, Shekinah Glory has weight. Yeah. There is a, a, absolutely. absolutely, absolutely, and love that. If you're watching and you have a testimony that you would like to share, how Worship Flags has changed your worship, has deepened your relationship with the Lord, I would love to be able to talk to, with you. If you like what we're doing and want to see more, please like and subscribe, and then get notified when we post more videos like this. Thank you so much for joining us. Bless you.